If you create inventory from other parts or raw material, the optional Production Manager module efficiently handles the assembly of these manufacture items for stock or for on-demand sales. Before these items can be produced, they must first be configured in the inventory module. They require an inventory type of manufactured to be used in production orders. And a list of raw or material components must be defined on the Bill of Materials tab, which get consumed when this manufactured item is produced. This includes the ability to include manufactured items as sub-assembly materials for multi-level production. Whatever you enter here for the Bill of Materials list automatically becomes a production order template and maintains a connection link even when values or components are modified. Also from the screen, you can copy components to this item from another manufactured item if you are creating or updating a new part number with similar components. Creating manufactured item quantities is done in the Production Orders module, where each order is for a single item and as much quantity as required. The Orders tab displays a list of outstanding production orders not yet completed, and orders can be created from scratch, or existing orders updated or copied to new orders. You can have multiple production orders for the same manufactured item, even for the same warehouse, if you build orders either for stock or outstanding sales orders. The Templates tab has a list of manufactured items with their respective bill of materials, and a new order can be created from the template. Multiple templates can be created for the same item, if they can be assembled differently, where one would be designated as the default template. If a template is edited and saved, you have the option to include a revision number if a company setting is enabled, if you want to keep track of specific template configurations. And if you have any open orders that use this template, you can click the Update Orders button to push the components and quantities to these orders, as long as the component on the order hasn't already saved a changed amount. In addition to the Orders and Templates tabs, it is also possible to create production orders from other places in Spire. In the Inventory module, if you highlight any manufactured items and click the Requisition button, these items are loaded for requests to process them into separate production orders. The required quantity comes from the suggested order quantity, but can be modified as necessary. Similarly, in the Sales Orders module, from one or more orders that contain back-ordered manufactured items, each item can be requisitioned and processed into new production orders. When this is done, the target fields on the order detail will contain the production source and number, and you can load the production order from the target button. However the order is created for the desired manufactured item, it will display the item and its components along with other order information. If this came from a sales order requisition, that order number and the associated customer, purchase order number, and order and required dates will be read in. For all production orders, the required date is important to know, in case any components are out of stock and need reordering, or as you plan which orders to produce. You can pre-configure production order phases if you wish to track the progress of a production order, along with the date of the last phase change, and edit or increment the next phase when that is ready. Phase changes are tracked on the Phase tab for investigation or to add notes. And you can assign a priority level from highest to lowest for the purpose of filtering or reporting to focus on high priority orders. When you have entered the quantity of the manufactured item to produce, you can easily see if there are enough raw materials for the production. The maximum number you can build is calculated and displayed next to the other quantity statuses. And there are colored visual cues to the status of each component item to determine the production capability. If the shape next to the part number is a square, it is a manufactured item, either the one at the top that you are building or a sub-assembly component that you can either suppress or show its components. If the shape is a circle, then this is a standard inventory item component. 
The green dot indicates that the component is in stock, and if all dots are green, then the item can be manufactured. A red dot indicates that not enough quantity is available to allow this production to proceed. A yellow dot indicates that the component item quantity is available, but there are other production orders with this component that total to more than what's available. Production is still possible for this order, but not for all orders that have yellow dotted items. And an orange dot indicates that the component does not have enough quantity available, but a purchase order has already been issued for the shortage. Production will be possible when that purchase is received. When not enough components exist, you can create a requisition for a purchase order to acquire them, with required quantity defaulting from the amount that you are short, and assigned to the vendor identified on either the production order detail or the primary vendor on the inventory item. Note that for subassembly items, how it is toggled will affect requisitions and building. If you can see subassembly components that have low stock, a requisition will be for the component. If the subassembly is not toggled on, the requisition will be for the entire subassembly item. Component items can be edited on production orders to accommodate processing, make corrections, and assist in future productions. As appropriate, you can change the quantity of component items, add a new component, or remove the highlighted component. If a particular component is configured with an alternate item, you can choose to switch part numbers, perhaps to allow production when it wasn't previously possible. Or if a component doesn't have the necessary substitution defined, you can still edit the part number in order to select the one that you need. The extended quantity of a component is calculated from the manufactured quantity times the component usage quantity. You can edit the extended quantity if what you actually used in the build differs from this calculation. For any component, if you enable a company setting for scrap and yield, there is an expected scrap value as either a percentage or net quantity that you can enter as typical wastage that is added to the extended quantity value. If a component item supports either serial or lot numbers, a button will be active for you to select them now or you can wait to select them when building if they are not automatically chosen when consumed. Either use the checkbox to pick one lot, or manually enter the allocated quantity. If there are any special instructions to be noted for any highlighted item, you can add them below. If you haven't edited any values on a production order line, indicated by light gray font, you can pull from template to refresh values from the template in case they were changed there either for this order only, or from the order list. Or if you have multiple templates defined for this manufactured item, you can edit the template value on the top row and reload all of the components from there. If you plan to use this production order configuration in the future, you can highlight the manufactured item and create template to create a new template record, or push to template to update the values from the template this order came from. When the production order configuration is finished, you can choose to commit raw materials to this order by changing the status to either pending or in progress, which includes components for subassemblies. If you have automatically commit enabled in user settings, changing the status also commits all components and prompts for any serial or lot numbers not yet saved. Otherwise, you need to use the Commit Item button to reserve component quantities for this order. If there are any reports you have to print before building, you can do so either when editing an order or from the production orders list, depending on the forms or reports needed. And if enough stock is available, you can build the production to create the manufactured item and consume components. On the Build screen, leave the received and assembled quantities as is to fully build the order, or reduce both to build only a portion of the requested amount. Or if not all manufactured items were successfully built, but all components were consumed, you can reduce the received quantity and leave the assembled quantity unchanged. It's possible, though less likely, 
to receive more manufactured items than expected. Continuing from here will give you your final chance to select serial or lot numbers for components, if not yet selected. And if the manufactured item uses serial or lot numbers, they are entered now, along with an expiry date for lot numbers. When the build is successful, the quantity on hand for the manufactured item is increased, the component items are reduced, and fully received orders with no quantity remaining are completed and moved to production history. If you would like more information about Spire Accounting, access the link in the description below to our homepage. Read the online manual help for additional assistance. Watch more videos from this playlist and subscribe to the Spire YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.